This is a Kirtland's warbler, a highly endangered songbird. It is a part of the jack pine ecosystem, a unique group of plants and animals that live and function as a unit. And what do these human activities have to do with the Kirtland's warbler? Just the opposite of what you might think. These practices may appear destructive, but they actually help protect and restore the jack pine ecosystem. They are vital to the conservation of the Kirtland's warbler and the other plants and animals that make up this unique place. The Kirtland's warbler is one of the rarest birds in North America. People have remarked that all of them together wouldn't fill a bushel basket. Only about 2,000 of these tiny birds exist in the world, and all of them spend their summers in a few counties of northern Michigan. Why are they so rare? It's mostly because they are very picky about where they nest and raise their young. Kirtland's warblers nest on the ground in young jack pine forests. The trees have to be between 5 and 20 feet tall, about the size of large Christmas trees. And there have to be lots of them. The jack pine forest must cover hundreds, if not thousands, of acres to attract warblers. Like many songbirds, the male Kirtland's warbler establishes a territory and attracts females by singing. After mating, the female lays four or five eggs in the nest. When the young hatch, both parents help feed them until they leave the nest. For the rest of the summer, the young will feed and grow to prepare for their long trip south. Kirtland's warblers uh, migrate uh, from their nesting area in Michigan starting in about uh, late August, early September, continuing through September. They migrate south to the Bahamas in the Caribbean and they spend the winter in the Bahamas and then about March and April they begin the journey north to Michigan to start their nesting cycle again. After trees in the nesting area get more than about 20 feet tall, Kirtland's warblers will no longer nest there. So how, over the centuries, have these picky nesters always been able to find large areas of young jack pine trees for nesting? Fire. For thousands of years, naturally occurring wildfires swept through the dry, sandy forests of northern Michigan. The plants and animals that live in these areas are well suited to periodic fires, and many actually depend on fire for their long-term survival. The jack pine tree is a good example. Most jack pine cones remain closed until, like popcorn, they are opened by fire. The cones hold the seeds until fire clears a seed bed, where thousands sprout in the warm, blackened soil. Ironically, the success of Smokey Bear's message has affected the warbler by reducing the amount of young jack pine forest lands. We cannot rely on natural uh, nesting habitat for the Kirtland's warbler because that habitat is created only by wild forest fires. And in the Kirtland's Warbler nesting range, there's a great deal of private property which has to be protected from fires. Fires have to be put out. As a result, there's very little natural uh, habitat. We have to rely instead on managed habitat for Kirtland's Warbler. Managed habitat is very similar to natural habitat, but with a modern twist. Instead of wildfires burning the forest, timber companies harvest the older mature jack pines. The cutover areas are then replanted with young trees. Wildlife and forest managers take great care to make these managed habitats imitate nature and natural processes. There's ways to make it more natural. I mean, we, and we're doing some of this with leaving <clears throat> strips of live trees in these plantations, and that's what happens in a fire. A lot of times the whole area doesn't burn, but it'll burn up except for little strips. And we can and do uh, leave either live or dead standing trees to simulate what you get from a wildfire. 
Historically, wildfires burn huge areas, which is why the clear cuts here are so large. We found from experience with the Kirtland's Warbler that um, they actually prefer larger areas. Um, we hardly have ever found warblers using a site that's less than 80 acres, and we get higher densities, earlier use, and longer duration of use in the bigger areas. And when I say big, um, we're talking now 1,000 acres or more. The trees that are harvested from the forest provide a sustainable supply of products and jobs for humans, an important economic benefit to local communities. Forest management practices that imitate nature benefit the entire jack pine ecosystem. There are a number of other plants and animals that benefit from the management uh, that's done for Kirtland's warblers. Uh, deer and turkey appreciate, for example, the open, the open in areas provided during the early stages of uh, jack pine growth. Um, Upland sandpiper is a bird of open spaces that's rare and uh, it's not unique to, to jack pine ecosystems, but it benefits greatly from the management done here. Uh, there are plants like uh, pale agrostris and uh, Allegheny plum that benefit from the jack pine management. Unfortunately, there is one species that benefits from this management that presents a serious threat to Kirtland's warblers, the brown-headed cowbird. Cowbirds are nest parasites, which means that the female lays her eggs in other birds' nests. So this is a problem, and the cowbirds will lay their eggs in the Kirtland's nest, and then the Kirtlands will raise their young, the cowbird young. Watch as an indigo bunting brings an insect to the nest. It starts to feed its own chick, but the larger, louder, more aggressive cowbird chick ends up with the meal. Eventually, the bunting chick will starve to death, or may be pushed out of the nest by the cowbird. This may not seriously affect the indigo bunting population, but it can be devastating for an endangered species. In 1972, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service began an annual program of trapping and removing cowbirds from warbler nesting areas. Frequently, other birds are captured as well. Whenever we get non-target species like blue jays or sometimes we'll get thrashers or red-winged blackbirds, we okay. make sure we get these out of the trap first. Removing cowbirds has had a remarkable impact. The number of Kirtland's warbler nests containing cowbird eggs dropped from 70% to 6% one year after the trapping began and has remained at low levels ever since. Conservation of the jack pine ecosystem and the endangered Kirtland's warbler has been a great success. In fact, it has become a model for endangered species recovery efforts throughout the world. A big reason it has been so successful is the effort and dedication of the Kirtland's Warbler Recovery Team and its associates. The recovery team is made up of wildlife and forest managers and scientists from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and U.S. Forest Service. The Kirtland's Warbler Recovery Team meets twice a year and we review recent research and activities that are ongoing to meet the recovery objectives for this endangered species. Using the best scientific techniques and equipment, the team monitors the warbler population through an annual census and banding studies. Okay, what goes over with it also manages the health of the forest and the jack pine ecosystem as a whole. The recovery effort is a melting pot of ideas and cooperation among agencies, <laughs> private organizations, and local communities, the people that are impacted by management activities. People in local communities have come to recognize that the Kirtland's Warbler offers some unique opportunities. We are members of the Chamber of Commerce, and they were thinking of something to do to bring in tourists. And we were at a meeting one night, and they were discussing things to do. And I said, well, they have a festival over a cherry. They have a festival over a tulip. Let's have a festival over our bird, our rare little Kirtland's warbler. All together. 
The Kirtland's Warbler Festival is now an annual celebration that focuses on the warbler and the jack pine ecosystem. Welcome to the festival. So follow me and please watch your footing. Tourists and birders come from all over the world to see Kirtland's warblers on the guided tours that are offered during the breeding season. There he is. There he is on that stand in the back. Mm -hmm. The tours that we promote here for the Kirtland Warbler have had a, a big impact for this time of year. May is notoriously a, a slow period of time for us business-wise, and uh, the ability to market to the birding groups um, uh, has, has really helped us out you know, during the slow period. In addition to the guided tours, visitors can also take the Jack Pine Wildlife Viewing Tour. This 48-mile self-guided auto tour runs through the scenic Osable River Valley and Jack Pine ecosystem. The tour was developed through a partnership of conservation organizations and local businesses. Things are not always as they seem. Activities such as clear-cutting and fire impact the landscape. However, in the case of the jack pine ecosystem, they are critical to conserving an endangered bird that helps define this unique place. Conservation of the Kirtland's warbler and the jack pine ecosystem is a major undertaking. It requires tremendous expertise, money, and support from state and federal agencies and local communities. Without this support, the Kirtland's warbler is doomed to extinction. Humans have changed the jack pine ecosystem forever, so forest management and cowbird control will always be required to keep the Kirtland's warbler among the ranks of the living. But with the support and cooperation of agencies, organizations, and people, we can ensure this colorful bird will sing on in its jack pine home for many years to come. The increase, uh, the, the very significant increase, in fact, to record numbers uh, of the Kirtland's warbler population in the last few years has been very gratifying to all of us that have worked so long to recover this species because it makes us realize that we do have the, the knowledge and the tools to, uh, to recover this very vulnerable and rare species. The reasons for conserving endangered species are many, but none is more eloquent than a verse by William Beebe. The beauty and genius of a work of art may be reconceived, though its first material expression be destroyed. A vanished harmony may yet again inspire the composer. But when the last individual of a race of living things breathes no more, Another heaven and another earth must pass before such a one can be again. This video was made possible by citizen donations to the Michigan Non-Game Wildlife Fund. To make a contribution to help support Kirtland's warbler conservation and other critical work of the non-game fund, look for the loon on your state income tax form or contact the non-game wildlife fund directly at this address.